this soda. Right there, mashallah. What's your name? Elias. Very nice. So, Surat al Kaf is amazing Sora. Why? Because it's the Sora of the change. If you want to change yourself, if you want to change your family, your friend, your community, this is the Sora where you have to start with. For sure, it started with Al. I know, the, the name of the Surah is Al-Kahf. It starts with which word? Alhamdulillah, that's good. So, since it starts with Alhamdulillah, how many Surah in the Quran start with Alhamdulillah? Five, can you name them? Fatiha? Khalas, you name one, it's enough. Saba and Fatar, good. I want you to name one. Who is next? Al-Kahf? MashaAllah. Thank you, Musab. What's next? Surat? The one it starts with? Alhamd. We have one missing. Fatr, he already said it. By the way, this Surah, it's big, and it was revealed at one time. The whole Surah was revealed to Muhammad Sallam at one time. Al-An'am, Jazakallah khair. Good. So these are the five Surahs. Let me go, to the, go back to the, to the story of Al-Kahf. The story of Al-Kahf, the first, everybody wants you to read the first few verses, you'll figure out that it's youth-oriented. The first piece of the Surah is youth-oriented. So there is a king, he is a disbeliever, and he worships stones, and he wants everybody in the city, in his community, to worship the stones. And days after days, this youth, 12, 13, 14 years old, they figure out that what their society is worshiping, it doesn't make sense to them. So they start building a doubt about worshiping stones. So, and the community heard them and figured out that they are kind of trying to isolate themselves from the society. So they brought this news to the, to the king. And the king brought them in front and he told them, what makes you not uh, uh, bow and sujood and rukua to uh, our stones, our, our gods? So they told him, we don't believe in what you believe in. So the one that created the suns and the moons and uh, is not these stones. So that king, he told them, we are going to give you 48 hours. If you don't worship what we worship, we are going to punish you. So this, how many, how many of them? Seven, good. So, so they went outside and they made mashura between themselves and they said, no way, we are not going to worship what these people are worshiping and we stick to our faith, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were, they were Muslim or not? They were Muslim, Abdul Zak, right? Why Muslim? Because they say la ilaha Allah, because they recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anybody who recognizes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that time is is a Muslim. You have a question? That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. But the most, the ulama, the most, they said they are seven. So we go what the scholar said. So me and you, we are good. We are just doing our effort here. So what happened is that they went far away from the city and they hide themselves in the cave. And you know the story. So when they hide themselves in the, in the cave and they, they were very tired, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent them to, to sleep for how, how many years? 300, bismillah. 300? 300 and 309, both of you are right. 
So they slept 309 years in the cave. And when the first one he woke up, and then the second, and then the third, and they start asking themselves, how many, uh, how many hours we slept? And one of them, he said, yawman or ba'da yawm. Maybe part of the time or, or, the whole, or the whole day. Why? Because when they went to the cave, they went in the morning. When they, when they woke up, they woke up in the evening, and they think that they spent only one day, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they slept 309 years. And guess what? On the way to get to the cave, they took some money with them, right? From that kingdom uh, currency. And that money, it has the face of the, of the king. And when they woke up, they figured out that they are really, really hungry. And they made mashura between themselves. And they sent one of them to the city to, uh, to get some food for them. And the, and the lead who sent him to, the, to get the food, he told him, wait, make sure that they will not recognize you. Make sure to go right away, buy the food and come back because they might find out about us and they take us to jail or they kill us, wherever, right? They're still in, in a fear mood from that king. When this boy, he went to the store to buy the food, he, uh, he got the food wherever he want and he want to pay and the guy, he gave him the, that currency, the paper of the king, face, whatever, and that guy, he figured out that, wait a minute, this is uh, the face of the king 300 years back, and we have a new currency. What does it mean? The spectrum, the whole spectrum changed. Even when he was going to, to, the, to the store to buy things, he, he figured out that the world's changing. The house is changing, it was like black and white, it becomes colors, and uh, the, the grass changing, the, the trees are changing. So that boy, he figured out that things are abnormal for him. So what he did, and when that guy, he figured out that these people, they have old currency of 300 years, he said, wait a minute, I'm going to call my police and the people to send you to the king. And when they send them to the new king, the new king, he welcomed them in a better way. And he told them, are you the ones that you fear the king, the disbeliever, and you went and you hide it? We heard about your, uh, your story, but alhamdulillah, you are safe. And he made them very welcomed by the whole community because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the whole society from kufr to iman, right? And he offered his, this king, he offered to build something on their honor. What is it? They built a masjid. Good job, Elias. So they built a masjid. A masjid is what? Is a symbol of faith. It means that they are Muslims. So this is the change. This is the first change that happened in this story of Al The next story is about the two people Two brothers, they lived in the, in the society, and what? They are brothers, but one is kafir, disbeliever, and rich. Allah gave him a lot of, a lot of money, and the other one, he's poor. Both of them, they inherited money from their parents, but the poor, he spent his money in, giving the, in helping the needy, in doing the good, and the rich, he used his money to buy a garden, he, uh, he bought the land, he made a garden, he made trees, he made apple, he made resin, he made uh, pa uh, uh, palm trees, he, he made everything. And then when his brother visited him, he told him, hey, look what I have. And he started bragging about what he has, and he st started telling his brother, the poor brother, hey, I have all this, I am better than you. You don't have anything, you are a poor guy. So look what I have. And even I don't believe that there is an end of the world. There is a day of judgment. So he start his, his kind of, sometimes what happens is the mal, when you have a lot of wealth, it makes you blind. It makes you blind. You don't see the, the blessing. You don't see the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You start thinking like Qarun. He start thinking, oh, I made it. This is my, by my effort. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach him a lesson and he destroyed all his gardens. Right? The next is, the next story is about, you know everybody, that Sayyidina Musa, he met Al-Khidr. Sayyidina Musa who has the knowledge, Allah made him, tell him to go and seek the knowledge from a wise man in the city. Sayyidina Musa is the one who battled Fir'aun. He's the one who battled Fir'aun. He's the one right now is seeking knowledge from an, a, 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 a man in the society, a normal man. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to teach him a lesson also. And on his way to learn from this Al-Khidr, from his wife, Al-Khidr, what he did? He did something wrong. He put a hole in the boat the first time. Second, he killed the boy, right? And third, he did what? He fixed the wall for the two urban. Good job. So what, why this kind of, uh, uh, you know, from fix, uh, uh, putting a hole is right or wrong? In the boat, putting a hole is right or wrong? Khalas, <laughs> we're not, yeah, the beginning is wrong, right? For me and you, for me and you, it's wrong, right? Mashallah alik, mashallah alik. You know the story better than me. Maybe next time you tell the story. So what happened is that sometimes we perceive something is wrong. We perceive it in our mind. You see somebody doing something wrong, you tell him, hey, you are doing something wrong, right? Because we have some rules in the society that wrong is wrong and right is right, right? But what happened when he did this whole, Sayyidina Musa, he was impatient. He was saying, wait a minute. Yes, we agreed, I will not ask you a question, but wait a minute, you are doing something wrong. I cannot, I cannot be patient here. And then he told him, hey, did we agree that you are not going to ask me why I'm doing things? Yes, I told him yes. Okay, forgive me these times, and next, uh, next he killed the boy. He did something totally major, wrong things in the society. And again, Sayyidina Musa, he was impatient, and he said, okay, I, I've, I ask for forgiveness, but this time you made me too much angry. You killed the boy. I don't know why you killed him. You are not supposed to do that. You look, you look wiser man, but at, at the beginning I saw you as a good man, but now I start doubting about what you are doing. And then what? And then the next, he upside down everything. He asked for food from the, from the community because they were hungry. But what happened? So... The people who deprived them to give them food to eat, he went to the, the, the wall and he built it. So he's, he upside down everything. For me and you, the wrong is becoming right and the right becoming wrong, right? So, by, but there is always wisdom behind that. There's always wisdom. Allah only knows the wisdom. So it teach us don't rush to the conclusion. No, there is. Don't rush to take a conclusion about what you see in front of you. Go back. Take a step back, analyze the situation, find out maybe there is some wisdom in it, do mashura, ask the people who know, then come up with uh, whatever uh, uh, conclusion, whatever something that you have to do to fix the problem. So I'm going to stop here, but next time I'll finish the third part, which is Dhul Qarnayn and Yajuj and Majuj and what happened. Jazakumullah khair, barakallahu fikum.